Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Waking up for a nice early, a uh, little bit of a later Monday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, wish you well. My God, Bitcoin having some breakdown action going on, so we'll be having plenty to talk about during this uh, stream. But as always, wish you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest, whatever you want in your life. I hope that that comes to you right here, right now, as we get as we head on into the live scene right over here. And Bitcoin essentially breaking down below the area that we've been speaking about, breaking, you know, essentially initiating the run that we've been looking for for the last well, ugh, Jesus Christ, man, uh, month, two months, whatever the fuck you want to call it back from over here essentially a very corrective pattern starting to actually finally break down and uh, reach its next support levels somewhere around the 3350 ish range although i do believe that it's likely to go a little bit lower but just to kind of leave it here for a second on the daily, this is why you use the, uh, the uh, this is why you use moving averages, exponentials especially. But look at how Bitcoin never was able to get above even the lowest period. This ten simple moving average right over here, the red uh, the red moving average, which is extremely weak. So while we did have hunts, while we did have puns both ba uh, sorry both ways, uh, you never really even saw the very the very small or the the the, the very low period ten simple uh, even give you a positive slope. In fact, it was pretty staunch resistance, which implies pretty hefty weakness as well uh daily oscillators as well kind of giving us uh, some more bear signals daily stokes are hitting at a cross down and very 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 likely to actually initiate that i'd imagine daily rsi giving us giving us some indications as well and again this was you know people were getting very optimistic about putting in some sort of a diamond bottom or a reversal pattern or whatever the fuck it was um at the 3550 ish level, which was just very unlikely to be true. Remember, when looking at the daily RSI right over here, it was beholden from getting out of the critical uh, zone for the, or sorry, not the critical zone, but the bearish control zone right over here, using the exponential as resistance, both of them kind of lining up with each other, which was inside into who has control and where this consolidation is likely to be resolved. Uh, you know, these things are just playing out now. Obviously, it's, you know, it's, it's not, not too helpful to talk about it in hindsight. Got DMI ADX actually giving you a fresh short signal. This is the first time that we've actually had the DMI minus get back above the signal line since uh oh don't say it crown don't say it the break of six thousand oh shit <laughs> <laughs> Again, does that mean that I expect another 50% drop? No. In fact, expectations are very, very bad to have. And I do believe that it's going to be quite, it's probably going to be, uh, it's it's probably going to be a lot to chew through to, or it's going to be, I think it's a little bit much to ask for to actually break through this lower 3200 area right over here. Th sorry, 3250-ish area right over here, which we'll talk about a little bit more um, as this video progresses. But I do want to cover the higher time frames because again, they really do help get rid of all the nonsense going on in this area. You know, hunts both ways. Two day right over here. Same sort of a thing with the moving averages. The 10 simple just governing it the whole way through and now just giving it the, 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 the that that last little tap to, to push it below the support and uh, not imagine that we do have yes we do have continuation we are making new lows a low of 33.85 uh, ish on today and what do we have over here dmi minus dominant trend getting back up again adx strengthening dmx saying uh-oh watch out baby and here's what i was talking about on the stokes as well so two day stokes we were watching yesterday and they were going to hint at across the upside if bitcoin were to maintain above that 35 50 ish level it obviously did not and what happens we just end up and, and keep on going down so this is why confirmation is so important of course i don't really care too much about a stochastic indicator stochastic oscillator when things are legitimately trending which they are certainly trending down right now we just had a consolidation resolve to the downside a consolidation that was actually quite long as well i mean you could really you know you could say it was it was all this area right over here so basically the whole of January and then really this whole thing is consolidation I mean this is a very orderly drop off in volume going from left to right corrective in nature and likely to be resolved to the downside and I believe that we are seeing the initial response of that um, going over here the three day as well you know three day you got the you got the three day little death cross I believe we might even be death crossed on the four day as well we'll check that out in a second but you know same same sort of thing over here the 10 simple actually governing all of these wicks on on the high side right over here that was the impetus for me taking my short from uh, 3650 ish area I am still short in my main account but I'm actually not short in my streamer account i did close it uh on this last down because i don't want to be too active and i have a quite a big position on my main account which i want to be um you know i that that is where my priority lies so you know managing a fucking 30 30 to 50 bitcoin position on a streamer account is just not like the opportunity cost of uh, of that is just not worth it um but looking at this right over here you know just continuation all the way through we have three day stokes again giving us the green light or sorry perhaps red light depending upon your your perspective right over here remember this was not only a rejection of getting out of the neutral zone 
but a cross down. And with these settings, you very rarely get the crosses. This last cross right over here was actually the break of 6,000. You probably remember that. And this cross over here was the big the big down in early August. Remember that uh, going all the way from 8,200 to 6,000 in the span of about a week and a half. And uh, the one before that, I believe the cross before that was the down from 10,000 right over here. So are we about to see another massive down? Well, historically speaking, it's more likely when you actually do get this. But again, I do want to be very, very adamant and clear that, you know, 3,250, 3,300 is likely to be quite staunch, I'd, I'd imagine. And on these, uh, and, and on this next pass that we likely have, again, I'm making an assumption that we actually get down there, but I do believe it's quite likely. Um, I, th I think that it probably does bounce. But the question is, does that bounce get faded quickly? Do we, does it get sold into and we actually break down through it and keep, and keep moving on? Well, I actually do want to start considering an idea with regards to that. So we're going to, we're going to look at the weekly and, uh, and monthly over here. And by the way, before I get too deep into it, I, if you've noticed, I actually have changed around a few things with the stream. I hope that my voice is a little bit louder. Please do let me know if it sounds okay. If you're if you're an audio expert, let me know if this is like too much or too little, or if it sounds like a fucking nails on the chalkboard or like a raspy lesbian, which I always sound like, but even more so than then perhaps I can adjust that. Uh, but please do let me know. I'm happy for I'm always I'm always looking for feedback to actually improve this stream. And as you can see over here, we actually do have the price of Bitcoin now visible, not blocked by my big fat head. So there you go. Anyways, uh, weekly right over here. And this is where things start to get interesting. Remember, we had a bearish engulfing dildo right over here, rejection of the 10 simple moving average, and also, you know, just another another high being governed by the 200 exponential moving average right over here, the purple line, which to me, as long as we are both opening and closing weekly dildos below that, I have absolutely no reason at all whatsoever to be even even consider that the low is in, uh, given everything else, which of course is more important. I went into deep detail on that on the video yesterday in the long-term analysis playlist, so definitely check out the long-term analysis playlist if you want some more long-term analysis. Uh, but to just wrap it up in a second why i don't believe that the low is in well first things first volume is not right time spent at the low is not right uh reaction is not right volatility is not right and mbt so no just completely external type thing does not look like a bottom either um but even you know even if even if i was wrong on all five of those things all five of those things that i typically do look for for major market cycle bottoms uh this would be my fail safe to tell to let me know that i'm wrong if we could both open and close a weekly total above the 200 expansion moving average Nowhere near doing that. I don't believe that Bitcoin is going to be doing it anytime soon. In fact, I do believe that Bitcoin's very, 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 very likely to be below it for the foreseeable future. Actually, um, again, people looking for this, uh, looking for this asset to turn around relatively quickly. I think. Well, I hope your definition of relative is. <laughs> no, I hope it's in dog ears. <laughs> Anyways, let's go over here uh, again. Weekly over here, we do have continuation. Remember this? Uh, I, I we just spoke about the bearish engulfing dildo right over here, but now you know continuation right over here. People are calling this uh, an inverted hammer dildo. No, it's fucking not. This again, the difference between someone who just looks at Investopedia and says, "I think I know what's happening," because I'm an analyst, not a trader. <laughs> but uh, her five thousand definitely on the table. No, stop it. Just fucking stop it. Um, but now we fully have broken through this ledge right over here on this current weekly dildo. Uh, yeah, of course, it's not confirmed. just started, but I would imagine that it's you know, more than likely to kind of continue on. Uh, what do we have on our oscillators? We do have weekly stokes just staying down in the critical zone. Again, the, when things are trending, and yes, we do certainly have a trend, they will stay down here for quite some time. You can see that there's actually a, uh, a pretty obvious um, uh, defense of the bearish control zone below this area. So and anytime that Bitcoin tries to rally out of it, nope, even on the stokes, which which will be the most responsive and will be the most uh which will be the easiest and first the first to notify you that we're actually getting out of uh more you know a more bearish market essentially i mean not not really there uh, it's not going to really be what i look for but just trying to <laughs> but at least <laughs> they'll actually give a glimmer of hope before anything else does not holy moly man there's a ton of snow going down down outside right now um but overall uh other oscillators not really telling us too much i mean our size still in the still heavily in the bearish control zone still being governed by the exponential over here we do have uh, dmi adx uh, starting to strengthen once again dmi dmi minus is dominant but not really turning up actually with it so that would be a counterpoint to what i'm saying and essentially that i you know do we actually break through our current low of about 3250 uh uh, sooner rather than later i would say um i would say that there's more signs saying that it's unlikely that than it is likely but i do want to do but i do want to show this right over here because it is getting close to the end of the month and this would be a counterpoint to what i'm saying as it stands right now the monthly is extremely nasty this is a fucking god-awful monthly uh from the from the way that it looks to me 
I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put it on the BLX index. We are in danger of breaking the green 55 exponential for the first time in Bitcoin's history. Is it that big of a deal? I mean, it is a big deal anytime that you break, you know, something like this on a higher time frame. But Bitcoin really hasn't had enough time to really populate this moving average to like give us a history of what it actually does when it breaks it. It's not it's not that it's like it's breaking it for the first time, and that's you know that's. It's like game over. No, not necessarily. Um, it's just like over here you broke, you know, you broke the 21 exponential for the for, for the first time. That actually, you know, th uh, that actually held up your 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 accumulation phase on your green 55. And then now, you know, it could be, you know, we, we might just be walking them down. Remember, these are common uh, Fibonacci inputs. And this next uh, this next cyan exponential would be coming in around 2400, which I actually do think is quite likely. Um, I, I think that is quite likely for a, an extremely strong bounce, perhaps even a reversal point. Um, if that area does fail, then then it's. On to the next one, baby. On to the next one. But my point is, is that with the monthly ending relatively soon, and looking at this guy right over here, uh, extremely. Un I mean, people are calling this a reversal right over here again. Volume, 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 and we need follow through. We don't have any anything that is indicative of a reversal off of this monthly dildo right over here. People just. Again, crypto Twitter does it again from the makers of 6,000 is the bottom. From the makers of falling wood. From the makers of this is the next Bitcoin comes. <laughs> Hammer reversal dildo on the monthly wrecked <laughs> rated r uh <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, to me, it looks like we are, we're actually defending the green 55 exponential and pushing it down, uh, wanting to sell off to the next one is, is what it looks like to me. So that'd be a counterpoint to what I'm saying, because the monthly is ending in the next, what, three days? Uh, we are at the 28th of January of 2019. Nicholas Mernon's here. Fuck! Bitcoin is supposed to reverse by now. Can't afford any more chicken tendies, mom! Got a little bit of uh, <laughs> got a little bit of angst today now, don't you, Mr. Nicholas Martins? Anyways, uh, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man, I am such a moron. Um, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, that would be a counterpoint, but it, it, but really, my main my 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 main assumption is I is I want to be more conservative than not and. Uh, and yes, I do believe that Bitcoin likely does get back down to those prior lows. Whoops, we have it right over here. Apparently, I didn't delete this. Do I want to redraw all this? Nope, I don't want to redraw this. You know, we've, we've been doing this for the last, like, we do this every fucking day. <laughs> so you probably, you, you probably know by now. I won't bore you with the details. But basically, this symmetrical triangle right over here does have a measure move all the way down here to uh, to 3250-ish area. That that would match up about with the 886 Fibonacci trace, which Bitcoin does seem to really like, actually. So yeah, you know, as long as uh, as long as we're below the breakdown point, which, which, which we are very much below the breakdown point at 30 3850 right over here uh, I am looking for this to be fulfilled and uh, currently making it down all the way to the 786 and yes I do count this as basically a test of the 786 close enough it's close enough I mean you know probably have another stab down and then you know maybe a little bit of a small bounce that's probably gonna be a sell for me um, but remember you know this we actually got some great insight on in what the bots bots and algos were doing and how they were distributing during this whole segment right over here remember this major bounce up and then we can make a nice fib uh, fib tracement on this Pops back down to the 618, gets front ran, uh, run all the way back up to probably like the one, what is it, the 132 right over here. Uh, I don't really have it in, but uh, back down to the 618, then sells a 382. That's going to be your next target, then pops back down to the 618. And then what's the next target going to be? Likely the 0.5. That's what we were waiting for. That's why That's why I took those shorts. Um, and, uh, and and after that, it's like, all right, I guess we're just ready for the markdown now. And that's exactly what we're doing down to the 786. And uh, does that mean that we're going to get back up to test the 618? Probably not. Um, or, or sorry, I shouldn't say probably not. I, I do believe that Bitcoin gets back up around there. And especially if Bitcoin does bounce off of this lower support trend line right over here, which I believe is probably going to be like the final, you know, that that's going to be the real test for this guy. Um, you know, if, if it does bounce around that area and wants to form this uh, descending trunk, which I think is pretty fucking likely, um, then then yes, obviously we will go and go go back above there. So I need to be careful with the way that I use my words because I get some messages after my stream sometimes and I, it makes me uh, scared. <laughs> Anyways, Bitcoin actually rallying up right now. So let's go. To, let's go into lower time frames. I just want to see what's going on right here. Um, Ah, not really doing too much. Putting in a nice hero pattern actually right now. Uh, but yeah, any any sort of a rally back up to this region right over here, I'll probably sell on and get back to uh, to having some short exposure on my on my streamer account um, and on my main account. I am short right now. The reason and and I just need to manage that right now. Make sure that I get my fills. So I'm looking to you just you just never know when you're actually gonna get a move. So do you want to be a little bit cautious with this guy? Anyways, um, okay. So going back on over here, what else do we have to talk about this? Well, I mean, there's not too much. I guess I've already drawn it out uh but yeah if 3250 does break on a you know on a higher level dollar time frame like a daily or something like that then yeah uh, 
you know, it's probably you're probably gonna get another one of those big flushes uh, down to our next big support, which which from what I look at is about twenty three hundred to twenty six hundred. Um, but remember, this this thirty two fifty area is thirty thirty two fifty ish area is you know quite stout. Uh, it's not just that that bottom. It's not just our current low and also that nice support trend line coming. You know, uh, more more of a historical one. But it's also if we put this guy right on over here, the two hundred simple moving average on the weekly. Should be coming in around there as well. In fact, actually, that one's right, uh, right, uh, rising rapidly as you can see, uh, coming in all the way at around 3,300 now. Wow, yeah. So that actually rose quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we're, you know, could you consider this already a test of it? I mean, stamp got all the way down to 3,350. Um, so I would. I would actually argue, you know, yeah, you probably do have another down around there, but do I want to be short coming off that? Well, that's why I want to close my shorts, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very, 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 very uh, in tu tuned into my main account right now, which is quite short, but I do want to be careful just in case. Um, could it be that we actually just pierce right through the 200 simple? Well, looking at the monthly, it actually does kind of look likely, but everything else says, hey, crown B, you know, stick to your fucking guns whenever you come up to a major support you get the fuck out if we actually confirm below this area right over here on a week on especially a weekly but but even a daily i'd be i'd be willing to make a decision uh i'd get short once again and i'd be looking for the next big area of course uh to show what i'm looking for and again this you know i'm making a major assumption here but i'm uh, an assumption that i do believe is extremely likely to happen although i don't trade my opinions but uh 32 50 breaking then where do i start looking towards 2300 to 2600 right over here that is the 886 now true tracement on um on the overall top to the overall bottom of the product of the past prior market cycle the 886 is where bitcoin did actually bottom out in 2014 just saying right over here and we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines in around that area it's best seen on a daily and if we put on the volume profile it should be coming in right around there yes indeed it is a nice thick af node although you can see even fatter ones down around here uh so fair enough and if we do put on um if we do put on and take off the exponentials and put on the trollinger bands which again not my favorite way of doing things i don't really care too much about the trollinger bands you can see that the lower trollinger band is actually coming in around that and rounding out that like lower 23 ish area not only that but going over here to the blx index where we have enough price action history and putting back on the exponentials and simples you can see whoops that's not what i wanted to do uh you can see that we actually do have the 377 uh exponential coming in right around uh, 2600 which is something that gets a lot of play in traditional markets and extremely important in traditional markets actually and that's why i that's why i use it and i want to see if bitcoin actually does start to pick it up um throughout this market cycle uh as that is also kind of rounding out that 2600 so anywhere in that range is is a range of high probability for a massive massive bounce perhaps even reversal of course when it comes to actual reversals on a major market cycle i need to see the reaction first and please 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 understand that you know all of the analysts out there all the people who say like this is definitely going to happen or that is definitely going to happen or if they're saying bitcoin's definitely going to 1000 or bitcoin is definitely not going to you know bottom out at 1800 or whatever it might be that is extremely 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 naive to say and it's very misleading and it shows it shows directly that that person is incredibly inexperienced with how these things actually get put in because remember when when major market cycle bottoms get put in what really happens well it's basically just a bigger account just someone with extremely extremely deep pockets you know half a billion billion plus dollars uh comes in and hits a buy button and when that sort of person hits a buy button on an extremely large amount well it's going to leave ripples within the market not like mr ripples nipples but like actual ripples where you can see oh someone stepped in and they actually want to accumulate right here so when they actually want to accumulate well you know, everyone kind of see the same thing. And that once they give up their hand, then people are going to start to jump in. So they know that when they actually hit that buy button, they have to get as much as possible at that lowest price um, in order to make it worthwhile for their strategy, which is typically a more long-term one. So keep that in mind um, as we do sort of chug along this area, because what is, what does it all come back to? Why do I even go on this rant? W the reason why I go on this rant is because anyone who's claiming that they know exactly where it's going to be or where they know it's exactly not going to be down around here. And I have three, three points of great interest um, uh, is, is just silly because you, we have to see the reaction just like this area right over here. This was technically a potential bottoming area. Now, was I leaning towards it? Absolutely not. But it wasn't until we actually saw the reaction where it was, you know, where I felt very comfortable stating, okay, this is not the way a fucking market cycle bottom looks like. Uh, you know, if you're zero for five on all the things that it looks like, probably not a market cycle bottom. In fact, if you're not even five for five on all of them, probably not going to, probably shouldn't even consider it to begin with. But fair enough. It's just, you know, people having wishful thinking, of course, uh, as this goes to cryptocurrency. Um, and we're going to go over an example on a different market cycle, actually, a completely different asset, so we can actually compare uh, what things what things can look like and also might be a little bit of doom and gloom. I do apologize in advance uh, for what for what we might be looking at 
you know, I, I don't hope to, I, I hope to have a more, a more positive message, but it's also important to understand what is possible within these, uh, within these sort of mark cycles. So for now, um, that's kind of the next one that's on my mind. We'll have to see the reaction if we do indeed get there and that will let us know if that's going to be the, an actual potential low or not. Now, of course, this area that we're in right now, I, I do always want to point this out. This area right over here, extremely similar to this area right over here. And, uh, and, and, and you'll notice that in this area right over here, sorry, let's actually go through why it's similar. First things first, volume is extremely similar over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here, just like volume over here is very similar to your parabolic cycle right over here. Not only that, but you had a descending triangle in 2014 leading into this down off of this area, which was a nice, what, like 53 and a half percent down. And you have the same thing right over here, nice ascending triangle. And then how much down di uh, did you work off that? About 51 and a, 51 and a quarter percent. And then after that, you bounced up. What? You bounced up about 20, uh, about 25%, you know, give or take a few bit. And what have we done right now? We've done about 25%, again, all in the span of about six, six or so weeks, I believe it is. Um, but you'll notice over here in 2014, uh, Bitcoin actually does, you know, it comes back down to its prior low. And this is what I'm kind of scared of happening, or not necessarily scared of, but, you know, you want to have you definitely want to have perspective on what's possible. Uh, and it actually pops back up and puts in a little bit of a higher high on the weekly. And I'm sure that it's got a lot of people, um, but declining volume right over here and really uh, an extremely long wick to the upside, uh, <laughs> you know, was certainly a warning sign. But after that, you actually did war roll on and uh, and down to your ultimate red deal capitulation death hole right over here. So if Bitcoin did, you know, do something similar to that, you'd imagine that it'd probably put it right back up around this, you know, 4,200-ish range, maybe even 4,300, 4,400. Um, so is that possible? Yeah it's, yeah, it's certainly in the cards. Of course, as long as we don't break the 3250-ish area, you know, I do want to be defensive and I don't want to be holding major exposure, you know, when I get down to, to, to the bottom of that range. So that's, you know, that's why I really, uh, if you if you can see my eyes over on my other screen, you probably notice that I am, you know, I'm just waiting uh, because I do want to, I do want to make sure that I close this uh, at, at the right opportune moment. So Again, sorry, I'm talking about my main account on, on uh, my, my, my short exposure on my main account. Anyways, okay, so yeah, um, I do want to speak. Let's go actually back down to the lower time frames. Let's let's speak a little bit more about these for a second here. Uh, lower time frames. We've been you know we've been watching this for a while. Yes, we are kind of coming into this next area support. Uh, the this area support also denoted and demonstrated by the CMEs chart. Remember the CMEs were a little bit easier to read, and once they opened back up, well, that's when the fun began. This is you know, and this is why I say typically weekend stuff is just you know ranging action where you don't really actually break uh, a major range one way or the other, but you will have hunts a lot of the time. Uh, well, this guy right over here, a very obvious ascending triangle. Working off that, uh, the measure move is down around here to about 33, what is it, like 33.50. And uh, you can see that that's around the 786 Fibonacci retracement, which is kind of where spot charts are right now as well. And you can see that Bitcoin has already fulfilled this nice measure move. Beautiful. You got to love that. Let's actually just make the same sort of symmetrical triangle right over here and see if that, that actually matches up as well. I'm going to likely think that it does. But let's just make sure, you know, you, it's always good to confirm. You never know. And they should, they should have good work around with each other if this is going to if this is likely to play out and there you go there you go yeah pointing all the way down here to about the 886 uh, Fibonacci retracement down around your prior lows at around 3200 ish area so Again, as long as we are, you know, especially as long as we're as we're below 3,500 now, uh, I would be looking for this guy to get hit. And here's the thing: because Bitcoin spent so much time, you know, trying to be uh, held up by the support at 3,500, it is extremely likely that it is. Well, it's not extremely likely. It is. It is now strong resistance. It's you know, it kind of flips, right? Uh, so at some point, it likely will be retested. And you know, on first pass, I likely I like to sell it for at least a scalp, and uh, and perhaps even you know that that uh, that might be a high of a bounce. You know. We'll We'll just have to wait and see. But overall, looking at this guy right over here, yeah, we're seeing we're seeing great um, carryover to actual spot charts. And like I said, this I, I you know I think that most people would agree that this is just an easier one to watch overall. It's uh, I think most people could identify. Oh, that's a bearish uh, distribution pattern right over there. We do have the right volume catch risk of that. You see the volume confirmation of a breakdown right over here as Bitcoin just you know slides its way lower. So again, you know, it's pretty fucking bearish essentially. Uh, match that up with what GBTC is doing right over here, which remember it is in a bear flag. It, it, this one has been leading spot charts for the last over a year now, and uh, and because it is in a, it, it is in a massive bearish distribution pattern, uh, while it hasn't necessarily broken down fully just yet, fully confirmed just yet, uh, I do think that is quite likely. Again, um, and the measure move on this baby would be pointing all the way down to about you know two point five and a half, yeah, two and a half dollars, or and such, something like that. Which remember.
number that would probably match up with our next target for spot charts at around 2300 to 2500 given the discount or sorry given the premium on the gbdc asset so uh we actually haven't had a full-on confirmation of a breakdown just yet obviously this does not trade on the weekends it's it's otc bullshit, so it trades on otc hours um but uh but hey uh likely to open up major down today as you'd imagine on a big break um which has been confirmed on cmes which i put the most weight on so yeah uh i think mr Beaterall was the was also a great canary in the coal mine just kind of following up on him and uh and bringing it back on over here we've been following this one and saying hey while i don't believe that this is a head and shoulders anymore this is a very obvious ascending triangle right over here the exponential is kind of confirming this with a death cross on the four hour test 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 reject 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 and getting shuffled down below all major movement averages at the very end and once once the 21 became extremely uh, tough resistance that was the time to take a position then another position on the break of this one six one seventeen uh, support right over here which we've been talking about for ages um and as you can see you know not getting all the way to the apex because it doesn't need to doesn't need to uh when it, you know once once it's pretty damn full it's uh, it's very likely to break and actually uh the measure move off this ascending triangle is all the way down here at about 102 ish area at the 786 Fibonacci retracement we are resting on a support right now on mr buterol um not i you know this probably gonna have a little bit of a stutter step here but overall uh destination is likely down around here around 102 at least for the next you know potential bounce uh while i don't believe that this is a head and shoulders i think it's actually something much worse something much more nasty you know coming off this th this nice markup over here this nice uptrend we do have a beautiful wyckoff top of distribution some uh some basically you know again i, I like to make that analogy of, of tapping the, the 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 glass on a fish tank trying not trying not to scare the fish away from thinking that it's guys buterol just doubled okay we're about to have an upgrade it's called content to note whatever the fuck it's called i don't even know <laughs> i don't even know i can't even say it but you know what don't just disregard the fact that everyone's known about this for the last fucking six months and new paradigm baby we're going to the goddamn moon well no, this is distribution, and, and I like to make that, ana that, that, uh, that analogy of tapping the glass of a fish tank where essentially the bigger accounts are trying to distribute, a.k.a. let go of their bags, a.k.a. sell to perhaps the less educated, the more emotionally and irrational investor, thinking that things just go up and down in a straight line. And... Um, and, and slowly but surely they they sell they sell they sell and then at some point in time they realize okay well we have enough buyers here you know people think that this thing is actually reversed and we actually have you know now we have people to sell to because you need a buyer for every sell that you have and then you get your first markdown once they actually figure out okay well <laughs> i don't think that we can maintain this price for, for much longer then what happens down around here you redistribute you know you can either reaccumulate or sorry you can you can start an accumulation down around here or you can redistribute well it morphs into a descending triangle which is typically a bearish review resolve pattern it was resolved to the bear side um and we got we're getting another markdown right now which i don't believe is over just yet so yeah uh just more likely you know li likely more of the same to come now i do want to speak a second on um you know when it comes to this you know you're probably going to hear a lot of people say guys bitcoin and my favorite shit coin just went down 10 percent any news is there any news it's like <laughs> yeah more sellers and buyers, more fucking sellers and buyers. But you're probably going to hear people blame the ETF being pulled now, which if you remember from just a week ago when it when it was actually pulled or, or a little bit of less than, less than a week ago, people were saying the exact opposite. And this is what I this is the point that I want to make. News is irrelevant. News is irrelevant because because it can it can be perpetuated both ways. Remember, just just when it was announced, like uh, like less than a week ago, people were saying, is Bitcoin bullish because we just had really bad news and it didn't dump? It's like, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, news can be perpetuated both ways. And now people are going to come out and say, guys, Bitcoin dumped because the ETF was pulled. It's that simple. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so you're probably, you're probably going to hear that um, from all your favorite crypto YouTubers soon enough. Uh, so be careful of that. Again, as always, price action first. You know, everything else is pretty much i mean how do you trade news how do you fucking trade news right um it can't be done it's it's already happened uh so yeah 
Um, what else do we have to talk about? Yeah, let's go over and check out the longs and shorts over here. Longs and shorts, uh, about uh, 29,000 open longs. So we actually have gained a few thousand longs and we've lost a little bit of shorts over here, 24 uh, and a quarter short, which with uh, three and a half thousand of those uh, hedged. So we really have a little over 21,000 open shorts. Let's actually go to the charts and see what they look like uh, when they're when they're represented visually right over here. Yeah, so people are actually longing this right now, which is great. You know, you, you want people to long a fucking downtrend. That's always good. Uh, just keep on buying something that's literally been in a downtrend for over a year perfect just just fucking drag this bitch out even more just even more but we do have about uh and not not that much really being added about 500 or five, uh, about a little under a thousand coins being being added in the last uh, 24 hours long uh, shorts right over here. Shorts are starting to go up a little bit, but still, you know, still near the lower end, uh, historically speaking. Anytime it's near the lower end of the 20s, uh, the, sorry, the 20,000 area, you know, it does typically match up with major dumps. This was your major dump in early August from 8,000 to 6,000 in a span of a week and a half. This was your dump of 6,000, you know, break of 6,000 quite literally. And we're once again finding ourselves in this region. You no know, people are making trend lines and shit on this. No, you can't do that. These are very incomplete pieces of the whole. It's just very silly to even insinuate that. Um, but but, but but historically speaking, we actually can come up with areas of, of interest, so to speak. But again, price action is significantly more important, important than anything that you see on a shorts and longs chart. That's even just on Finex. And for the people who are bringing up the longs and shorts of BitMEX, that's just taking another fucking step because that just shows that they are so fucking incapable and so inept to not even read, to not even read the very simple instructions on BitMEX that say for every long, there's a short and for every short, there's a long, meaning that it's only ever going to be one to one and it operates off of a funding rate. It's not like Finex where you have like a margin funding pool where people just kind of grab it out of and uh and, and put on positions you know willy-nilly where you can get these massive imbalances which do lead to some you know to 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 some price action now on, on on bitmex there is research to suggest that anytime that the that uh, that the funny rate gets you know well above not 0.1 percent in either which direction that actually does match up with some some decent moves, um, but again, you know, it's a secondary type thing. It's not, it's not, not, uh, not my way, not my main way of doing things. Um, but it is, you know, it, it is relevant or at least statistically uh, relevant. So yeah, you know, shorts being down around this area historically speaking does line up with some major massive dumps. Uh, just at critical points to the downside, this was your jump, a, dump, dump of January, jump of February, right over here. The reason why there, there's such a significant difference between these, this one over here and this one over here is because Bitcoin costs significantly less in this area right over here. I mean, th this area over here is like literally above 15,000. So you can imagine that, you know, you don't need to put on as many coins short in order to get the same sort of exposure. Uh, whereas over here, you need to put on, you know, in like three, four or five times as many coins, uh, which kind of makes sense. Because over here, you know, we're operating on like the, the, the critical area is about 9,000. Over here, it's, you know, 18,000. So that would be double times. I mean, this is, you know, even even more so actually. Um, and then over here, you know, we're twenty four thousand, so still, still significantly below that. When you when you make like an actual relation between price and you know exposure uh, for how many coins you need. So 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 so, what else do we want to talk about? Um, while we're here, uh, back on to let's go back on to the lower time frames. We didn't really go through like the lower time frames too much because really, you know, the big news is that. You have a consolidation uh, pattern being resolved to the downside. I mean, that's really all it needs to come down to. But uh, you got, you know, your oscillators on your four-hour time frame. They're all going to be showing bears right here. Uh, four-hour uh, ADX DMI. That that did give the signal yesterday when we were on video. I mean, today is just following through with that. That's all the ADX getting up there. Um, four-hour Stokes uh, still still working their way down. As you can see, lots of snakes on the way down. But remember, when things are trending, I don't really care about any sort of momentum oscillator. It's not it's not important to me. People are going to try to you know buy something because it's like you've got some bullish divergence it's like yeah it's gonna work here and there but in an overall bearish market i'm much more inclined to take a bear signal in the bearish market right now you know the time to the 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 time to take those signals was right over here which is the one that we caught um uh which was the one that we caught on video a few days ago uh, that was that was quite lucky because like not very very rarely are you able to catch both the move and then the reaction after that on video typically you just catch one if you even catch anything because you know i mean if i stream for like two two to three hours a day it's like that's you know there there's a whole most of the day you know i'm not streaming so i don't I, you know i can't really catch it on on stream um but that was kind of special. And then, and then, yeah, you could have shorted this area right over here. But now, I mean, there's not really, you know, what do you do in this area right over here? I mean, the trend is down. The trend is your friend. And I think that it's more likely to go down. But I don't, 
I would not be looking to short this area like literally right here. Again, um, lower time frames again a little like would be suggesting a little bit tiredness, uh, but I don't really care all that much about that. Um, <clears throat> again, the you know when things are trending, things can stay down here for quite some time. That's why I always say it's incredibly silly. It's a, it's incredibly it's incredibly naive to ever say something like overbought or oversold. There's no such thing as overbought and oversold. Quite literally, no such thing in trending markets. You can stay overbought and you can stay oversold for for a long fucking time, way longer than you can stay liquid for if you try to counter trade that. And that also that also, that actually brings me up to another point that I do want to make. A lot of people are, are making this point that you know everyone's bearish right now, and so the contrarian view would, would be to be bullish. Well, not only do the margin positions just quite literally say that that is wrong, um, you know when you have when you have more longs than shorts, which they are starting to converge on each other. But actually, I mean, well, they actually did gain gain divergence away from each other over the last. Uh, over the last, uh, what is it like? I mean, they, well, they've just been diverting each other for, for quite some time, um, but loosening on that divergence in a way. Uh, but but my point is, is that in, in a market like this, in a market like this where cryptocurrency is a special thing, right? It's a special thing because a lot of people here are here for reasons, uh, and, and I'm making assumptions here to be fair. Um, but but there are reasons for here of like anarchy. They want to they 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 want to get away from government controlled um, fiat and all that kind of stuff, and so they are by nature contrarians themselves. So it's like to be a contrarian is actually the norm in a way. If you want to go like super psychological uh, type thinking on this guy, and and really when it comes down to it, right now it's almost the <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost in a way a contrary to just say yeah it's fucking going down man and the question is how far down just like and sorry and, and you know that's that's more speculation on my part and perhaps just i'm saying a lot of dumb shit right now but what i can say that i actually really can stand by um is is right over here when Bitcoin was going up, you had all, everyone trying to time the top because, you know, it's it's par it's going fucking parabolic. You're in a parabolic blow off top. Essentially, you know, it's going to fucking come down or, or or the traders, you know, know it's going to come down at some point. This is not sustainable. We're not in a fucking new paradigm. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing's happened like that. All right. No one fucking uses this. <laughs> no. Yes. And I do believe in Bitcoin long term. I think it's going to even get some crazier numbers long term. But to be realistic, no one's using this right now. No one. And when I say no one, I mean, yes, I understand that there's like a few people out there who, who know how to set up a lightning, you know, and, and, can, and can buy a fucking coffee with this. But for the most part, I don't, when I go out, when I, uh, when, when I go out, you know, to, to do my normal day-to-day -day activity, I don't see no one fucking using Bitcoin. Most people don't even know what Bitcoin is. Um, well, it, I mean, that's also dependent upon where you live. But my point is, is that you know, going up over here, everyone, you know, the contrarians were trying to short the top each and every little drive through. Well, that is silly. It's, from a trader's perspective, I need to see a reversal first. So you saw a lot of people try to call the top. You saw someone try to call the top at 8,000, exit all crypto markets. You saw uh, someone try to call the top at 10,000, Mr. Tony Vase saying all sorts of silly stuff. T it's not supposed to go above 10,000. It's not supposed to do what? It's not supposed to? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like... <sighs> What the fuck did I just hear? Not supposed to. Not supposed to. How There's so many things wrong with that statement. It's not supposed to. There's no supposed to in this game. There's absolutely no supposed to at all. Price action is going to do what price action wants to do. And it's for that reason that it's going to blow through someone that, like you who... <laughs> sorry, it's like I'm speaking to Tony Vase, like specifically right now. But to the people who thought that... Um, and man, I am just being such a fucking asshole right now. I apologize about that, guys. Um, haven't perhaps perhaps projected my own insecurities onto the market right now but when people say stuff like that when people say it's not supposed to you can't say that in markets and again a very naive thing to say just as naive as trying to you know do fucking elliott waves on a long and shorts chart um so and a lot of those people wave their money goodbye so it's, it's it's by the luck of the draw that tony vase does not trade himself because well <laughs> As you can see, Bitcoin doubled essentially from ten thousand to twenty thousand. There is no supposed to in this game, and uh, and and it's not until you actually get a confirmed reversal where you are supposed to take a short and and and, and change your mind. Um, so again, that's why I'll never catch the ultimate top like this. I did get out, however, on this sixteen thousand five hundred area right over here with the majority of my account, and that you know, and that's 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 just trading. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, you'll, 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 you'll get the same thing to the downside at some point in time. It'll just be a clear flush as the bears have full control, which they are. The bears already do have full control. 
but just like over here, you know, you did have you did have your your dumps before, you know, loading up into your pumps. You're gonna have your pumps leading up into your dumps, just like kind of we had right over there. Um, so yeah, and, until we actually get a full in reversal, there's you know there's the contrarian view is to not be contrarian. <laughs> Quite literally, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend, and it's really that simple. I mean, has the trend changed ever since over here? Well, I see lower highs and lower lows all the way through on the weekly. Pretty damn simple. Um, so yeah, okay. So I do want to now switch gears a little bit and go on to something where I, I want to offer some perspective on a different asset, um, uh, an asset that is that is commonly compared to Bitcoin and the only bear market that I've actually traded like personally uh, before getting into Bitcoin because you know I'm, you know I wasn't really old enough to live through the bear market of like I don't know was it was it eighty five or eighty seven or whatever the fuck it was it was you know it was I wasn't trading back then uh, but I was able or sorry in in oh eight I wasn't really trading either I was down on the floor you know, being a clerk for, for my father, essentially on Pacific Stock Exchange. But I, you know, I wasn't, I can't say that I was like actually trading, but GLD gold, I did actually trade. And let's just bring him, bring up a chart over, uh, of him, of him over here. And we can actually look at gold and silver because they're, they're basically the same fucking beanie baby. Um, but over here, you know, you got, you got Peter Schiff's baby. I'm going to put it on a linear chart and same sort of a thing. You know, you, you have, you have your nice parabolic blow off top right over here. Everyone's screaming new, new paradigm. It's never going down. It's never going lower, bro. Can't go any, it can't go any lower. Elliott wave, fifth wave going to the goddamn moon. Well, <laughs> well. You know, just like that, you, it's it's a very similar, actually, it, it's actually very similar to feeling to Bitcoin because you have the same sort of cult-like mentality. And again, I like Bitcoin, but we're only, we're only, you know, mo I think most people can agree with this, that Bitcoin, in a way, for, definitely for some people, is like a cult. You have gangs and you actually literally have gangs like the, like within the gang of cryptocurrency. So, so there's like Bitcoin gang, then there's, then there's Bcash gang, then there's fucking Litecoin gang, then there's Ripple gang, then there's fucking Stellar gang, then there's, you know, Buterol gang, whatever the fuck it is. And then like, and then you start getting onto the, <laughs> to, to page two of CoinMarketCap and you're like, I'm in what gang again? <laughs> I'm in what fucking gang? Crypto kitties. Ah, fuck. Anyways, you know, the gold gang right over here, same sort of a thing, right? You have your parabolic blow off top and then you get your first markdown coming into this area right over here, which people think is the bottom so far. A very similar chart actually where, where gold, you know, gets marked down, puts in a descending triangle right over here. I uh, actually do have a chart on this. You know what? Let's do a completely new chart. Let's do a completely new chart. You actually did put in a nice descending triangle right over here. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not one to one exactly like Bitcoin, but you can see that it breaks down below this sending, uh, this sending triangle right over here. Retests it, comes back down, puts in a low, uh, you know, make, tries to make a rally off that, and then puts in a low right over here. And now it's been trying to, essentially, you know, consolidate in this area, which, you know, as as, as long as you're below basically thirteen, what is it like thirteen sixty? It's 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 not fucking good. Um, but but same sort of a thing, right? This thing is taking its time now. Gold actually right now, funnily enough, does look like it wants to rally, and we've been saying that, you know, while I'm not I'm not sold that the bear market in gold is over just yet. I do think that I think I do think that the immediate tra trajectory is like is more up than down. Uh, in fact, you know, making another run at 1350, 1360 area is probably likely. But uh, as as the last week it was a pretty damn good close actually. But uh, but fair enough. You know, let's actually go to silver, which I think is a little bit more akin to Bitcoin um, in the way that its chart actually is playing out right now. So let's go over here. Yeah, silver. Silver is interesting as well, right? So you have, you know, same sort of a thing. Silver is an even greater be beanie baby, right? Because it's like, it's like, you know, you get into the gold gang and like it can kind of make sense. And then you start looking at silver and you're like, all right, you're telling me what? <laughs> Zenu needs, needs silver to build his planet? Okay, I'm convinced. I'll buy your beanie babies, no problem. <laughs> Whatever price you want, I'm fucking in. And let me get some, let me get some goddamn nanos alongside that as well. Uh, but right over here, you know, you go through your parabolic blow off top. About the same time, I mean, not the same time as gold, but similar. You know, it uh, comes back down, and then you put into descending triangle right over here. This looks extremely similar to 2014 actually for for Bitcoin himself. Uh, then gets marked down over here, puts in a descending triangle, kind of like what we're doing right now, and that breaks to the downside. Uh, comes back and tests the bottom of that descending triangle. And you can no notice that in this descending triangle, it actually it pops back and tests this area quite a few times. Um, 
uh, sorry, on the support uh, before breaking down and then breaks down, you know, puts in a, puts in a consolidation right over here, gets resolved down. And then now it's trying to, it's, it's basically trying to put in, you know, it, it put in another consolidation right over here. Now the descending triangle uh, removes that one to the downside. Um, I, I don't believe that this looks good, but it, it's going to give, it's going to get another chance pretty damn soon. Uh, when you have a double bottom like this, people, people will cry double bottom, but in, I don't believe I've really ever seen a double bottom in my experience, like a legitimate double bottom, you know, you'll rally typically off your prior low because people you know it's, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy but remember when talking about major market cycle lows it only takes one person really uh, one person with extremely deep pockets which which certainly do exist in traditional markets um and uh and, and so the fact that you know you get two chances to buy the lows really 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 unlikely uh so yeah this thing is probably just consolidating still but my point is is that you can see like if you were looking at gold people are going to be calling bottom like the whole way fucking through right so Looking at this guy right over here, I just want to offer up some perspective. Or sorry, uh, in silver, if I said uh, I, I think I might have said gold right there. Uh, but to be to be clear, this is silver. Um, but but the perspective that I'm trying to offer right now is that you know this can take a long fucking time, man. Whenever you have a parabolic blow off top, it's it it takes time. I mean this this happened in 2011, by the way. We're all the way in 2019 now. Uh, almost 10 years, closer to closer to being 10 years than than not um, at this point in time. So. That's that uh, that is essentially the point that I'm trying to make right now. And you can see a major rally going back right over here. Oh, my God. So nasty. So, yeah, just understand that games can be played. And uh, and overall, you know, this is uh, I mean, could that be it for Bitcoin? I don't think Bitcoin's going to take 10 years to resolve itself, but it's likely to take a long. I, I think it's, it can very easily take a long time. Let's go over and check out Mr. Ripples and uh, and then Mr. Stellars, and then we'll probably wrap this bitch up. But Mr. Ripples back below 30 cents. I believe that we are. Have we tested the lower trend line that we've been looking at for quite some time? Let's go over here to the daily. Nope, not quite there just yet, but definitely, you know, definitely drooping over. Definitely looking very weak. Again, three day deal death cross right over here. Just as long as you're below the 21, it's incredibly bearish. Uh, and that is around 34 and a half cents. Never, you know, never got, not, never even really tested it actually after breaking it right over here uh so even weaker than the, uh, the, uh than i first considered and i believe it's also being you know the 10 simple is probably well well away from price action right now yeah this one's like this one is complete dog shit right now again um mr ripples uh, i don't short mr ripples i will never short mr ripples i don't believe in shorting mr ripples just because you don't know when when brad garlic is going to flip that switch and go to negative two dollars but but in a more serious tone i actually do like this one has you know, if, if you're looking from a more mainstream perspective, this one has all the marketing, all of the things in the back end kind of put in place to, to put it as a, uh, to put it as, you know, potential to, if anything's going to buck the trend or, or in decouple, I think it's probably going to be this guy. Although it has certainly not decoupled just yet. And uh, yes, you do have this support trend line right over here around low 28 cent. If that area does get smashed through, I don't really see too much stopping you from, you know, mid, mid teens, uh, 15 to 16 cents. And I do believe that it's very likely to get down there. The question is how long. Um, but uh, yeah, that that would be a very strong support. However, doesn't mean that it can't break. If that area breaks, you know, deep into the into the single digits, uh, once again, this is you know, and th this is quite this is quite sad because this you know, I mean, it's not it's not just it's not just Mr. Ripples, but it's a lot of cryptocurrencies. I, you know, I know a lot of people think that this is just not possible. When it is, it, it, it very much is. Um, Mr. Stellar over here again. I've been speaking about this for a long time. So many people bullish on this, and I'm not trying to say this to be like I'm cool and I know what's going on and. and you know, and, and I'm the best. No, not at all. I, I hope to have a more, uh, a, a more, um, uh, humble message than that, but, or sorry, hu uh, I, I hope to have like at least an air of humility when speaking. Um, but my point is, is that this is really bad. I mean, even with this overall chart of, you know, not giving, not like literally pumping and dumping all the way back down to where it started from, this is still not good. Uh, you have a bull trap right over here. You have a failure to, I mean, you basically break the support of your, of your pattern right over here. So you got two chances right over there. Uh, retest the, retest the, uh, the form of support is resistance. So that's your third chance. Three day little death cross right over here. And then just down, um, making new lows. Actually, this guy, quite literally has new lows uh again i've been saying this for a while this thing is very likely to come back down to at least six and a half cents um you know maybe four four and a half cents uh that area you really don't want to break if that area breaks big trouble big big trouble uh it, it is actually coming back to back down to a pretty uh particularly uh strong support i mean not strong support but 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 an area of interest right around this uh, guy at about low eight cents i mean we're already in the in the eight cents areas you can see right over here um 
but uh but yeah as long as as long as you're living below the 10 simple and especially the 21 i i i, I treat this as a piece of uh as a piece of garbage um you know three day stokes over here crossing down giving you the actual top of that or, or sorry right right before that balance a little bit of an indication so again you know be careful right now as someone messaged me on trading view which is great um <laughs> to get messages at all hours of the day it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes so please forgive me if it takes some time to get back to you uh so yeah <laughs> yeah i don't I I hope, hopefully i'll get back to that one soon man um but yeah, Stella over here just, I mean, this is one that's just slinking down. This is, this is an ugly chart right now. But again, not as ugly as something that literally has pumped up and then dumped all the way back down to where it started from. That is like, <laughs> it's like, this is bad enough. But that is, it's it's like, I just don't understand how people can even consider that as uh, a good sign. Because understand what is happening in a chart like that. That really means that, I mean, that really does imply that, you know, the people who created that project are probably selling. Um, so you don't, I mean, <laughs> you typically don't want people, <laughs> you don't want, you don't want the people who made the project to fucking sell because now they don't really have a vested interest. So uh, the whole, you know, the whole self-reinforcement of, of, you know, working on your own projects probably not quite there anymore i mean you saw it with litecoin right charlie lee sells all of the shit and uh, he literally sells the top i mean it, it's i mean he literally timed the top like perfectly i mean he tells you where he's going to sell he's just debuting the whole way through you know it's <laughs> it, it, I, it's just not good so again th this is what i was talking about with mrs litecoin um three day over here three day never really got back above in fact the three day actually printed a head and shoulders now now that i look at it like this volume is right we do have a neckline right over here at around 30 dollars uh this is on the three day dolo time frame only but as long as we are below the 10 simple and if we can break below 30 dollars right over here and close a three day dolo below there uh, I actually think that this is likely to play out. Uh, and remember, it, it was an inverted head and shoulders to the downside right over there, but that breakout failed, and that's usually a big, a big warning sign. Where does this measure move point down towards? Ah, uh, finally into the into the into the high teens at nineteen dollars. Um, again, though, you know, it's th uh, this is why I say when when we're looking at this market. Typically look at Bitcoin first, Buterol sometimes, um, and then some of the other high high alts. But if uh, if they look bearish and then Litecoin looks like kind of wants to be a little bit bullish, well, I'm going to default to the other ones, the other majors. And that's exactly what happened here as you get rejected right over here. And again, use the higher time frames in these uh, in, in these spheres because they will get rid of a lot of the noise. When people are screaming bull back to, you know, 40 bucks or, or, four, or 50 bucks, whatever the fuck it is, you can see very, very easily that this is not the case. Again, uh, nice orderly drop off in volume, corrective price action and coming down as we make our way through this arena um okay so i'm gonna get back on over here to bitcoin i'm gonna start wrapping this bitch up because probably spoken spoken long enough already and really embarrass myself by being a complete fucking jackass throughout this whole video apologies about that but hey if you're still here i do i do want to say thank you um Overall, Bitcoin coming all the way back down to this, you know, this 786 Bernacci retracement. Do we bounce off this again? Do we make another stab at it? I, I think I think it's likely that, that we make another stab at it and then probably put in a little bit of a bounce. But uh, overall, I think very, very likely to come back down at least to 3250-ish area. That's going to be where the real test is. Does Bitcoin break it or not? Uh, if it does get broken, I want what I'm looking for is like a daily dollar close below there on heavy volume. Um, and and if that happens if that happens in the next three days before the end of the monthly dollar close or i mean if bitcoin even gets back down around there in the next three days before the before the monthly dollar close uh, i think um I, I i i i don't think that we're going to be doing that uh, i don't think that we're going to be selling or, or sorry doing this descending triangle right over here if that were to happen i mean obviously i mean obviously it's like saying if the descending triangle breaks we're not going to be doing it no shit no shit but what i'm i think the more important thing that i mean to say is that if it does break it's probably going to be some pretty damn fast price action down into the mid you know 2000s i'd imagine um and perhaps a little bit lower so you know keep your eyes on that that's going to be the next piece of the puzzle uh, i believe uh, but overall, you know, I'm just more of the same. We're seeing a bearish pattern being resolved to the downside. And that's, you know, that's really all it comes down to. Keep in mind, this 3,500 level right over here likely to become very strong resistance. So if Bitcoin does turn back up and test that area, you know, uh, probably, probably a nice trade-off there. But uh, I think more immediately, we're probably going to be, you know, 
fucking around on the downside most likely so that's going to do it for today uh i'll be back on a little bit later with some live stream action i'm going to go eat a lot of food now and have a little bit of a gym session as well so i'm looking forward to that hope that your monday is going well it's always a pleasure to speak with you again thank you for putting up with my uh absolute uh silly talk sometimes but at the same point in time i just want to say thank you so i'll be back on later and look forward to see you there and if not wish you well take care